students so this is pratibha ramgonda so today we are going to discuss the first chapter that is introduction to embedded systems so here we are going to just discuss the introduction to your embedded system its classification its application then purpose of an embedded system then there is a difference between your embedded system versus your general computing system the last is your characteristics and quality attributes of your es okay so first we will see introduction so when i am introducing an embedded system it is what it is a combination of your hardware software okay along with your mechanical parts which is used either in either for which is used for a uh, specific design right for a particular function so it is a uh, modern embedded systems they are oftenly based on your microcontrollers okay and there is also a ordinary microprocessors and some peripheral external peripherals are also connected when it is a more complex systems next is classification of the embedded systems so basically they are classified into four based on their generation on the complexity and performance and on its deterministic behavior and on the triggering so first let us discuss based on the generation first generation now when it is first generation that is 1g it is said that the early embedded systems which were built they were 8 bit microprocessors like uh, 80 85 and uh, z80 and even 4 bit microcontrollers so these were simple in hardware circuits with a simple uh, software which was developed in your assembly code so they were used in your digital telephone keypad stepper motors so these were all the examples of your 1g next was your second generation so these embedded systems were built using 16 bit microprocessor or 8 or 16 bit microcontrollers so the instruction sets for these were more complex and powerful than when you compare it to your 1g so some of the uh, second generation embedded systems they were containing embedded operating systems for their applications so they were used in data ex execution uh, systems scada systems etc the next one is 3g so with the advance in the process technology uh, so these embedded systems were powerful means they were having 32 bit processors or 16 bit microcontrollers in their design and there was a new concept of uh, application and domain specific processors like your dsp that is digital signal processors and ascii that is application specific integrated circuits were brought into the picture so here the instruction set of the processors were more complex and powerful and the concept of instruction pipeline was also involved here the one more thing is the dedicated embedded systems they were real time and they were making use of general purpose operating system so this kind of embedded uh, systems they were brought into the area like your robotics media industrial process etc next is fourth generation now in this fourth generation there was a advent of system on chips reconfigurable processors and multi core processors which were providing you a high performance tight integration and miniaturization into the embedded market so the fourth generation they were also used i mean they were giving you the high performance real time embedded operating systems for their perf functioning so uh, smartphone device mobile internal device then mobile internet devices these were the these are the examples of your fourth generation okay next comes so these are all the uh, classifications which are based on your generations then based on the complexity and performance uh, they were divided into small scale medium scale and large scale small scale means which were used for a Uh, simple applications where your performance requirements are not on the time means the particular time is not allotted for it so you can take an example of an electronic toy so they were uh, these small scale they were usually built under low performance and they were making use of uh, 8 or 16 bit of microprocessor or microcontroller and uh, these uh, small scale they do not uh, contain any operating system the next is medium scale uh embedded system so these were complex in hardware and for firmware slightly comparatively with your 
small scale now these they were built around with a medium performance so they were making use of 16 or 32 bit microprocessor or dsps and they were also containing embedded operating system next comes your large scale now this large scale which involves high complex hardware and firmware which is required uh, which is required and they are used in your mission critical applications where it is demanding your high performance so they are commonly built around high performance say they can have 32 or 64 bit risk processors right and uh, uh, they also have programmable logic devices they contain multiple processors and um, co units like or hardware accelerators for uh, affording the processor requirements which is used for the main processor of the system and uh, at last i can say about this as complex embedded systems they usually they have a high performance real time operating systems which is used for <clears throat> task scheduling prioritizing and management next is based on the deterministic behavior uh, they actually are applicable for your real time systems where your application or task execution behavior will be deterministic or non deterministic then based on the triggering we they are real embedded systems basically they are reactive in nature which can be classified or they can be based on the trigger so reactive systems can be either your event triggered or time triggered so these were the classification next is applica applications of your embedded systems we have lot of applications few are they are used in consumer electronics okay like camera orders, cam recorders or cameras household applications like it can be examples of your washing machine refrigerators then comes your automotive industry which is used in your anti locking uh, braking system engine control it is also used in your home automation and security systems in telecom computer peripherals computer networking systems healthcare it is also used in your banking and retail and at last it is used in your card readers like your bar card and smart card readers which you make use in your daily life next there is a purpose of embedded system okay so any embedded system which are designed they are designed for the purpose of one or any combination right so they include some steps those are what the first step is data collection uh, storage representation data communication data signal processing monitoring control and the last is application specific user interface now let us discuss one by one now when i am speaking about data collection or storage uh, i said you that your embedded systems are designed for particular uh, purpose right for that the data collections has to be collected uh, from the external world and once the data whatever is been collected it is done by storing analyzing manipulating and then transmission now the data whatever you are collecting it can be analog or digital right so this embedded system with the help of its analog data it will capture the uh, data directly from your analog signal and if it is digital first it will convert the analog whatever the analog signal you will get that it will get converted into digital with the help of your digital converter right and then after that it is given to your embedded system now the collected data it may be stored in the system or it may be transmitted to some other system okay then uh, the the next is uh, you can take example for this is uh, a digital camera it can be a best example right first you will capture the image then you will store the ca captured image in the memory of the camera and then that particular image will be presented to the user through a graphical lcd unit so this all comes under your data collection storage and representation next is data communication now whatever the data you have taken right embedded data communication systems these are used in your ranging from complex satellite communications to your single home networking systems so this data either it can be transmitted by wired or wireless medium if it is wireless medium it offers you a cheaper connectivity examples of wireless medium can be your bluetooth zigbee wi-fi etc but if it is examples of wired you can have rs232 usb and etc so examples for this can be your network hubs routers switches right 
Next is data signal processing. Now, whatever the data has been collected by your embedded system, they can be used for various kinds of data processing, right? So, embedded system with your signal processing, they are employed in the applications for demanding signal processing. It can be like your speech coding, audio video code, etc. Example for this can be your digital hearing aid, which is a typical example where it has to employ the data processing because it, it should improve the hearing capacity of the person who is wearing it, right? Next is monitoring. Now, embedded systems, they are designed for the purpose of monitoring, which is used to determine the state of some variables using your sensors. So, almost all your embedded products, which are coming under the medical domain, are with the monitoring purpose only. Example, you can take ECG machine, which is used for monitoring the heartbeat of the patient, but it cannot impose the control over the heartbeat. It cannot control the heartbeat, but it can... Uh, just uh, count the heartbeats, right? The next is control. Your embedded systems with the control functionality, they will control over some variables according to the changes that are taking place in your input variables. So, these embedded systems will have sensors and actuators. Now, as I said, sensors will be connected to your input port to capture the changes which are happening in your environment. Whereas, your uh, actuators they are connected to the output port which is controlled according to the changes in the input voltage means actuator will control the changes which are taking place in your input accordingly it will change so sensors are connected at input which will uh, sense the changes which are taking place in your environment and actuators are connected to output they will change according to the changes which are taking place in your input so the best example for this can be your air conditioner right next is the last one is application specific user interface uh, so uh, your embedded system will have some applications user uh, interface such as your buttons switches keyboards light bells dis uh, display units etc for this you can take a best example is your mobile phone right so in mobile phone what happens user interface is done through your keyboard system speaker vibration alert etc next comes your uh, difference between your embedded systems and your general purpose right when i'm speaking about general purpose it is a combination of your hardware and general purpose os which will execute a variety of applications but in embedded system it is a combination of your special purpose hardware and embedded os which is uh, specified or it will execute only few sets of applications and in general purpose what happens it will have a general purpose operating system but embedded system it may have or may not have operating system then applications are altered by the user in your general purpose computers whereas applications are not altered by the user in your embedded system performance is key factor in your performance is a key factor in your general purpose whereas application specific requirements are are key performance when i am speaking about the power consumption it is more in your general purpose and it is less in your embedded system response time it is not critical right over here it is critical for few of your applications the next is characteristics of your uh, embedded system so the characteristics again it can be divided into application and domain specific reactive in real time operates in your harsh environment distributed small size and weight and power cons let's discuss one by one when i'm speaking about application and domain specific you know that each and every embedded system will have certain functions to perform and they are developed in such a manner that they have to function only right so they cannot be used for other purpose like if you are using a washing machine that has to be used for uh, washing clothes it cannot be used for washing vessels and everything for example that was your example right so that is why we say that your uh, uh, embedded system is application and domain specific next is reactive and real time now whatever the embedded uh, systems are designed they are reactive to the event that are occurring in your environment so we say it as reactive so these events are always real time right real time means the operation should be responding to the request in a known time right uh, exam these applications are also flight control systems like your anti-lock braking systems they can be the best example for your real time embedded system 
next is it operates in your harsh environment now it is not necessary that your embedded system should be deployed in controlled environments now the environment in which your embedded system can be uh, uh, disturbed by your uh, dust or some high temperature right so because of that your system placed in such areas they will be able to withstand with the changing environmental condition so that even they work in your harsh environments next is distributed now certain embedded systems they are part of what larger system which will act like a distributed right now these distributed are independent of each other but still they have to work together for forming a larger function now example you can take your atm machine where you have a card reader embedded unit which is responsible for reading and validating your users atm card and here it also performs what transactions you need for performing transactions there is also a currency counter for dispatching and vending currency to your authorized person then printer also is available for printing your transaction details so these all will independent embedded systems but they work together in order to achieve one goal that is known as what atm next is small size and weight now the embedded systems they are uh, basically compact in size and they are very light okay and um, for example you can use uh, you can just see your uh, currently which you are using mobile phones they have many features but they are very small in size and weight next is power concerns so power management is one more uh, important factor which is used or which can be considered while designing your embedded system they should be in design such a way that it has to minimize your heat dissipation by the system right nowadays your ultra power components are also available in your market next is quality attributes of embedded systems they are divided into operational and non operational first let us see operational operationals uh, these are related uh, to the embedded systems when it is in operational mode or online mode okay so it comes under the category like a response throughput reliability maintainability maintainability security and safety now what are these right response means response is how quickly uh, your system is responding right so it will tell you uh, most of the embedded systems they will demand for your fast response which is used in your real time okay example your uh, embedded system which is deployed in your flight control application should respond in a real time manner throughput means it will deal with your efficiency of the system it will tell you rate of production of process in a defined process over a period of time example you can take a card reader right next is reliability it will measure how much percentage you can completely rely on its proper functioning of the system right so mean time uh, between the failure and mean time between your repair they are termed as what uh, system reliability right mean time uh, between failure will give you the frequency of the failure in your hours and months whereas uh, mttr they will specify how long your system is allowed in order to be uh, before it reaches the failure next is maintainability maintainability means what it will support and maintain the end user in your technical issues or if any product failures is happening right so they are maintainability is closely related to your system availability they are again uh, speci uh, classified into scheduled and maintenance unexpected failures right uh, example can be your printer next is security now security means whatever the confidential integrity and availability okay of the information security now what is this confidential confidential is nothing but the protection of your data and application from unauthorized disclosure and integrity means it is a protection of your data and application from your unauthorized modifications and availability means it is the protection of data and application from the unauthorized users next is safety safety is one important because it should not damage which is uh, which is done by your operators or public or environment right and uh, the breakdown of the embedded system may occur due to what its hardware or firmware failure so safety analysis is a must in your product engineering why because it should anticipate the damage and it should determine the best course action to bring bring down the consequences of the damages which are happening at its acceptable level coming to the non uh, operational we have testability and debug first debugability 
right non testability and debug now testability will deal with how easily one can test his or her design application okay so that everybody can uh, whatever the person has done he has to easy debug means what it is a uh, debugging the product uh, as such as you can consider figuring out the probable sources which will create unexpected behavior in the total system evaluability means it will refers to the case is with the embedded system which is used for modifying to take the new advantage of new firmware or hardware technology portability means it is a system independent so your embedded system will be said portable if your product is capable of functioning in various environments time to prototype and market time to prototype is a time which is elapsed between your conceptualization of a product and the time at which your product is ready for selling or use right next per unit and total cost cost is what it is which is closely related for the end user and the product manufacturer now uh, you can just see from a designer or a product development company perspective that the ultimate aim of the product should be generate marginal profit so your budget and total cost should be properly balanced in order to provide a margin profit thank you students